the scanner, they, this new scanner they have coming out called the. You know, you already. So we have to restart. Right? What's up, guys? Welcome to the Illuminatic YouTube channel featuring special guest Nikita. Hi, guys. So we just got a email not too long ago from a company called 3D Maker Pro, and they wanted to send us a 3D scanner called the Whale that's coming out for us to more or less get familiar with. So it came in, not to my knowledge. And we actually don't know very much about this scanner. They kept a lot of stuff under wraps and wanted us to figure it out. So this is essentially what this video is. So this is literally how it came in this evening. And we're gonna basically do a raw unboxing and see what we can figure out from the scanner. So let's go ahead and do it. Three D scanner whale premium. Premium. Turntable, data transmission cable. Wait, it comes with a turntable, or is that just uh, get the I guess it comes with it. Oh, oh, it does case. come in a Pelican case. Nice. Okay, okay. Alright, oh, turn, it, turn it for the crowd. Oh, there is a turntable, that's cool. See? I told you. It comes with the USB with all the software. It's sealed, I don't know. What's this? Power adapter. For your country? For my country? Is that what these are? Oh, they are. Okay, so power adapters. This is a tripod. Yeah, the tripod. Cool. Hey, look, is, is this carbon? It's a carbon rod. They just have leftover carbon rod they make random things out of. That's carbon rod. I'm pretty sure that's carbon. It's, it's carbon rod. Are you sure about that? Yeah, it looks like carbon rod. Uh, adapter cables, I'm assuming for the computer. This is some sort of Power. charger. Power cables. Oh, this is the turntable. Okay, this is all the stuff for the turntable. Oh, okay, this is a pretty basic turntable. And then finally, the scanner itself. So this is probably about the, the size, shape, and form of an EVA. Um, a bit thicker. It's a bit thicker, it's a bit bigger. So I'm hoping, without knowing very much about the scanner, I'm hoping that this probably has capabilities similar to an EVA. Because I wouldn't imagine a scanner this big would be used to scan like exclusively tabletop figurines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it wouldn't be handheld either. If I was doing it. So how do you feel? What are, what are your first thoughts as, as Arctic EVA and Leo users? Um, I find the tripod funny. Why? For the turntable stuff? Yeah, I mean, why would you, why would you need a tripod? For a turntable? Because the turntable moves and the tripod moves. Right, but the tracks where you can still just handle it. Oh no, they said you can do both. Okay. But sometimes maybe you just don't want to hold it. <laughs> maybe you just want to load things and let it rotate. No, but it's strange to me because typically you get more benefit from changing the Z axis. Oh, yeah, I see that. So I can see that. Strange to use. I guess it's contextual then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's our first feedback. We'll see, we'll see how it is when we actually scan it, but maybe you don't need the tripod. Because um, he does bring up a good point. If you can move while you're scanning it, then you can go up and down, which is going to be better overall. But this might be also a like a hobbyist scanner thing that we're not familiar with. This is the software, I'm assuming, but the problem is this is a Mac computer. Eat USB in and see what's inside. So manuals, software, and video. Video is, I guess, let's see. Is this the same video on the website? Oh, this is the same video on the website. Okay. So it's a software called JM Studio. Do we have the cable sorted out? Working on it. What are the adapters? So this looks like their own software. There's a calibration file. Doesn't need USB 3. Powering on. Wait. Oh, you good? It's on? Yeah. So I have it open, it worked. Uh, it's not, so I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna try to relaunch it. And it typically doesn't work. For now, it seems like the workaround is either restarting the computer or just killing the app application and then reopening it. Oh, it worked. It finally worked after maybe 10 minutes of trying. 
so we're gonna do a picture in picture so you can kind of see what's going on. As far as plugging in, all we have is a power cable that goes into a plug. I believe it's 12 volts. And then one USB cable on a Y cable. So this is actually kind of elegant in that there's only one cable going into this. On the software, we see a work mode that says near or far. So I'm gonna use this as my example. This is in far mode and you can see on the right side it says too close. And then on the left side, uh, go near and here. So I think this might be a little misleading because the table is black, but it sees the uh, paper just fine, sees the computer and all this stuff just fine. So now, we have this turntable that I'm gonna demonstrate as well. All we need now is something to scan. So I just looked through the shop to find just something that would work. And I found this, which has a complexity of different shapes. So like you can see there's black here, there's a lens here that we need to scan. So I think this is a pretty good object that represents something that's hard to scan. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that here. And that's black to make sure black. Yeah, exactly, black exactly. So we're gonna scan this and um, I guess to demonstrate. Let's start with no spray. Yeah, let's try with no spray. Right. But um, you can kind of see that it sees the shell of the. It sees the shell of That's the. That's actually a bit overexposed. You see the red? The red means it's overexposed. So you should turn the brightness. Oh, down. I can turn the brightness down. Yeah. So there's buttons to turn the brightness down on the keys. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and spray it, and we're gonna go ahead and take some A sub. and I'm gonna spray this scanner down, and we'll go ahead and have Nikita scan it. So this does auto evaporate, it's very useful. And I'm just gonna spray everything that's black. And I'm actually gonna plug in the included um, turntable USB into the computer. And it will start rotating. Let's start. You can see that it's scanning. It lost tracking. Should I stop the rotation? I think it lost it. Here, here, stop it. Stop it. You want to do near? Okay, that's fine. That looks like it works. So if you're going to do turntable mode, I think you just leave it in place. Otherwise, it's, you run the risk of losing tracking. Oh, you can actively change the brightness? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. So it's on the fly adjustments. Shall we just not move it? Yeah, this works reasonably well. Should we try in far mode? I think it's the tracking. Here, let's try it again. Yeah, so this is far more effective. I think near mode is definitely for like small tabletop figurines. This seems to work far better. Yeah, and the frame rate's pretty good. I'm not losing tracking yet. So I think it definitely comes down to just making sure you're using the right setting for what you're scanning. Let's flip it. Yeah, let's flip it. So now that we have this side, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. We're gonna spray the rest of it down. Ah. You wanna take this one? Take this, do this one. Sure. For for what you're getting, for how much you're paying for it, pharma works reasonably well. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay, go ahead and scan the bottom. Would you like me to do the road table, turntable this time? No, no, I think that's better. Go ahead. Try it. So we're now done scanning that. So we're gonna go ahead and process the scan and prep it for printing. Let's see what it comes out like. Yeah, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so now we have this. So I think, oh, this is in the wrong viewport. Uh, 
Facebook page. Wait. Okay. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and align this. But in order to do that, I think we need to delete the um, delete everything that's below the table. So in order to do that. How do you delete things? We're, we're, we're trying to figure this out from like a uh, new user standpoint. We're trying to figure out how friendly this... Get it? Because it looks like Wally. Okay. Now I press delete. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay, well, that worked beautifully. So, okay, now we do the same thing with this one. So you just press control. So how, what did you do, actually? Control drag. But why didn't it work before? Because you had a different human selected, so it wasn't clear that you were selecting me. Uh, what did you change? Everything. Nothing and everything. You just have to be in a view mode for it. This view mode? Yeah. Not this one? Yes. Not this one. In this one. What? Hold on. I think it's this. Oh. I think this must be it. Oh, control out is also deselect. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It does. All right, all right, let's try aligning. So now that we have these two scans, right? Drag one item to align. Okay, cool. Maybe we can auto align it. Let's right. try auto align. Just like animation. So. Now we have the model here that's aligned. It looks like there might be a couple of issues. You can see that there's like points there that are leaving. And I have some missing data right there. Um, but we can go ahead and try fusioning this. Uh, or it's called process, that fusion right there. Remove noise, repair, simplify, all that good stuff. And I process it. It does this take a while, so I'm gonna skip. So now it's been fusion. It looks like this. Um, you can see the software get filled in some gaps there. Um, there seems to be a little bit of misalignment here. Um, I'm curious if this software is gonna get updates. Um, this seems to work pretty well. But other than that, let's export this into Cura and see what it looks like printed. Now I have this scan imported into Cura. You can kind of see here that it's a little bit clunky because I'm importing a raw scan and not a reverse engineer part. So this is like a pretty memory heavy part. But other than that, I'm going to print this out of PLA and we'll see how this comes out. So I have the model. It's exported. Everything looks like it's been repaired and it's solid. Cool. So let's go try it. to paint it black, kind of like the real object right here. And we're gonna kind of go through the inconsistencies and how they kind of actually played out in the real print. So as far as scale goes, it looks like the scale is exactly correct. Um, it even had similar plaques right here. So those match, but this is kind of where the inconsistencies start to show. You can kind of see that there was a alignment issue um, that I explained in the, in the processing a part of this where this half kind of didn't align correctly so you can kind of see it right there and right there oh my hands are dirty sorry but other than that i mean for the price range this is actually not a bad deal this this will do pretty much like a good amount of stuff that you would ever want in a household setting my only recommendation to 3D Maker Pro is to upgrade the software a little bit. If the software gets better, this would go a long way and I would actually start using this. That concludes this video. Um, this was awesome to test. I'm gonna play around with this some more, hopefully see some software updates, make sure 
uh, that this is getting the updates that it deserves. This is a fantastic entry-level scanner, especially for the price. And if the software gets better, you can definitely see me use this more. Um, until then, I'm excited to test this. Thank you so much, 3D Maker Pro, for sending this out. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, I, hopefully, I'll show you more 3D scanning stuff and more car stuff. I'll see you soon.